Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Amplid UNW8 snowboard. This board features Amplid's pop camber, which is good old fashioned man camber. So from contact point to contact point, you got that arc of traditional camber. Expect a lot of load, pop, snap, and drive from this board. This board is available in 156, 159, and 163. I rode this board at Arapahoe Basin on a sunny bluebird day with moderate winds at times. The snow was firm, fast, there was death cookies, ice, chunder, kind of just a mix of everything in between. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label Bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. This board is stiff, and I mean stiff. This could possibly be one of the stiffest snowboards I've ever ridden to date. It's a consistent flex from tip to tail, and there's a tiny amount of torsional flex, and I mean absolutely tiny. On a groomer, this board is smooth and stable. You feel absolutely nothing. When you get into rutted out terrain, you know, with those deep ruts, chunder, frozen dead skier families, if it can't plow through it, it's gonna jar you when it hammers into them and goes up and over it. Otherwise, very stable board. Cannot stress that enough. When you're flying around the mountain going Mach 10, you're gonna have to put a lot of load into the camber to get this board to pop, and instantly it wants to rebound right back to its natural shape. It's very reactive in that. It's not the snappiest board out there, but it does get the job done if you absolutely need to pop over something. Because someone will ask, no, you cannot butter this thing. I can't, you probably can't. If you're watching this review, I know you can't. So let's just move on. With this board being super stiff and designed to ride Mach 10 everywhere, you'd think that this is going to be just a ripping trench lane carving board. You would be wrong. This isn't about laying deep hard trenches. This is about leaving a fine line in the snow and picking your line as you do it so you're transitioning smoothly around everything in your way and you're going from one side of the trail to the other and then back. This is a board that you have to be calculated with and you're gonna throw a lot of your weight to get it to engage. It does engage out at that front contact point and with that lack of torsional flex as you shift your weight, you're doing less ankle steering and more throwing your hip into the board and driving that back knee to the center to get it to flex so that it pushes that power out on the tail. This is a board that the more power you put into it and the more drive that you give with hip movements, knee, ankle flex, everything, that's what you're gonna do. If you're a slow slug, you're probably going to die on this thing. You have to be quick and calculated. This is a board for just going and just swooping from one side of the run back to the other. It's got you in its death grip, locked in, just going in that thin line on edge from one side to the other. You're not laying it over, and you inevitably will try to lay it over, and let me tell you what happens when you lay it over. You have to be calculated. You have to know what's in front of you, what the transitions are in the snow, what everyone around you is doing. This is not for the faint of heart. Oh no, my friends. This is a board for someone that is so calculated, they can predict the movements of everyone on the run before they even do it so that they know where they're going. Because if you don't, you're fucking dead. That's how powerful this board is on edge. You're screaming at Mach 10 and you're just laying that little thin line in the snow. You're not putting your whole body on the side. No, 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 you're not laying it over. You're just leaving that little pencil thin line while you're on edge. Yeah, it's one of those boards. Who's this board for? The hardest of charging free ride guys that wants the stiffest snowboard they can find. Talk about a snowboard that is definitely not designed for anything that I would want out of it. This is not the board for me. I know this is not the board for me. It's a good board for what it is, but it is not the board for me. This is not for the weak. This is not for someone that wants to be laid back. You are giving this thing 250% at all times, no matter what. Sure, it's damp. It's reactive. It's a board that'll plow through just about everything in its path. But it's not going to be for someone that's like, well, I'm gonna be a little laid back today. No, no, no. You're coming into this thing full force. This is a friggin' supercar in snowboard form. Comparable boards, the Nitro Pantera, the Ride Commissioner, the Battalion Carver. 
Finding recommendations, the Ride A10, the now O-Drive, the Rome Cleaver. This has been my review of the Amplid UNW8. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.